So far, Virgin Hyperloop One has teased us with their works with groups in India. It has been exciting to think about, and for the people in India, they've been really tweeting and really excited on social media. But now it's a fact that, that Virgin Hyperloop One is moving forward with the state of Maharaja. This is your news pod for February 19th, 2018. I'm your host, Blake Annaberg. First, a bit of background on India. These are very ambitious days in India. The Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, yesterday delivered the inaugural address at the Global Investors Summit, Magnetic Maharaja, Conference 2018. India has seen huge urbanization. India knows that they cannot rely on gas-guzzling cars as America urbanized back a century ago. In the next five decades, there will be more urbanization in India in the last 5,000 years. Indians need to innovate, and it's also a strategy for their growth. They need technology that can change the way people and goods are transported so that they can move even more massive numbers of goods of people. The key is how fast they can move these things. Thus, India is willing to facilitate and act as a catalyst and support disruptive technology as a country. At the Hyperloop One Vision for India event, there is an acknowledgement that India thinks that there can be greater benefit from Hyperloop technology than in other countries like in North America and in Europe. So now let's look at a timeline of press releases from Virgin Hyperloop One. It first started February 28th of 2017 when Hyperloop One and the Indian government officials led an innovation summit called the Hyperloop One Vision for India in New Delhi. They discussed India's most promising hyperloop routes. At the summit, there was an attendance to the Minister of Railways and the CEO of the National Institute for Transforming India to discuss how Hyperloop One can integrate with and augment India's vast transportation network with clean, reliable, on-demand autonomous transport. And they also wanted to connect India's major cities with faster than airline speeds. The summit focused on Prime Minister Modi's vision for transforming India and how technology can drive this transformation. This vision of connecting the country fits in with other initiatives with Make in India and Digital India themes. But the summit was really about Hyperloop One announcing the five semi-finalist teams from India for their Hyperloop One Global Challenge. The five Hyperloop One Global Challenge semi-finalist teams were an AECOM Bengaluru to Chennai a route which was 300 kilometers or more in about 20 minutes. The Lux Hyperloop Network, Bengaluru to Thiruvananthapuram route, which is about 700 kilometers in 41 minutes. The Dinklicks Groundworks Group, which wanted to focus on Delhi to Mumbai via Jaipur and Indore at about 1,300 kilometers in 55 minutes. For the fourth group was Hyperloop India, which was Mumbai to Chennai via Bengaluru about 1,000 kilometers in 50 minutes. And then the final group was Infini Alpha, Bengaluru to Chennai in 330 kilometers in about 20 minutes. So the next press release to come from Hyperloop One um, was in September 14th, 2017. This is where they announced the 10 winners of the Hyperloop One Global Challenge, two of which were Indian. The first group was the Bengaluru to Chennai team led by AECOM India, which was about 330 kilometers, connect six cities, totaling about 17 million people. The second group, uh, Mumbai Chennai group from Hyperloop India, and that route is about 1,100 kilometers. That would link about 10 cities, totaling about 43 million people. The third press release in November 16, 2017, stated that Virgin Hyperloop One signs an MOU with the Indian government of United States to conduct its preliminary study. Uh, conducting this preliminary study to identify potential routes in the state of Karnataka and improve connections between the fast-growing industrial hubs within this region. They wanted to identify routes within these three Indian states that see promise in Hyperloop following the recent um, announcement with another state, the AP and Maharashtra. They also wanted to envision a national Hyperloop network that integrates seamlessly by linking the 75 million plus people across the three metropolitan states of Karnataka, Maharashtra, and the AP. So this was a memorandum of understanding with the Karnataka Urban Development Department, the KUDD, um, and it was to seek, um, identify potential routes to improve mobility in the Bangalore metropolitan area and connecting high growth cities within the state. This MOU promise was on kind of the footsteps with another MOU exactly at the same time with the government of Maharaja and uh, the government of AP 
and further, it's kind of funny that they sent two press releases on the same day. Um, but the second press release um, with the Poon Metropolitan Region Development Authority, the PMRDA, and same exact kind of MOU as the other one, but to analyze the high level economic impact and technical viability of this particular route. They also wanted to work with other partners in the region and the Poon Metropolitan Development Authority would help them with that and also the regulatory requirements to support the report. With data. The preliminary study was intended to, to give an analysis of the applicability of the hyperloop technology, identify high priority routes within the state based on on demand analysis and socioeconomic benefits, as well as inform the government of Maharashtra any further decisions uh, to progress with a full stage project. This Mumbai to Pune route really focuses on rapid public transport, most and the seventh most populous. Uh, is in this area, and it would reduce the time traveling between uh, Mumbai and Pune in under 20 minutes. The Hyperloop would definitely make these two cities into India's first and largest megapolis. Current time would take about three hours to travel by car. It would also streamline airport connectivity, such as connecting Pune's new Prandar Airport to the city center, or Navi Mumbai International Airport to the Trantra Shivaji International Airport. We'd also look at connecting Nagpur, which is the easternmost part of Maharashtra, with Mumbai and Pune to vastly improve passenger and freight transportation. Finally, the press release note noted that India has been facing major transportation challenges, um, and according to the Ministry of Road and Transport and Highways in India, 65% of India's freight is transported on the country's strained and congested road networks. Um, Hyperloop would promise uh, speeds two to three times faster than high-speed rail, and um, it would be fully autonomous and would deliver um, a 300-kilometer commute in under 20 minutes. So that's kind of some of the metrics that they, these governments used to base their decisions. So finally, February 18th, yesterday, another press release, the Indian state of Maharashtra announced their intent to build the first Hyperloop route in India and sign uh, a historic agreement with Virgin Hyperloop One. Um, this feasibility study um, would support approximately 150 million passengers between the Pune, Mumbai uh, cities uh, per year and to help boost in economic competitiveness through high-speed transportation, job creation, and construction. They want to start with a operational demonstration track. I'm not exactly sure what that means, and how large that would be, but it's an operational demonstration track. Um, the Virgin Group is chairman by Sir Richard Branson. He announced the framework agreement with the Prime Minister uh, Modi and the Chief Minister of Maharaja to begin development of the route. This was a historic signing at the Magnetic Maharaja event and was also attended by Virgin Hyperloop One board members and key investors, as well as recognizing the Maharashtra's government contribution to the country's economy. This one state, you know, has about 51% of the total investments in India. Um, it's attracting global investors like Hyper Virgin Hyperloop One. And the state's overall development in the past few years uh, is a really big example of the way um, thinking has changed in India, also improving conditions in the country. And they want to model other Indian states for infrastructure spending and achieving its bold vision, having a trillion dollar economy. Sir Richard Branston said, um, Virgin Hyperloop One can help India become a global transportation pioneer and forge a new world changing industry. Really this Hyperloop route between Pune and Mumbai could happen in about 25 minutes. It would connect about 26 million people. The high passenger and high capacity cargo route could eventually support 150 million passenger trips annually, saving more than 90 million hours of travel time, providing greater opportunity and social economic mobility. The Hyperloop system would also have the potential for rapid movement of palletized freight and light cargo between the port of Mumbai and Pune, creating a robust backbone for deliveries, supply chain, and next generation logistics. Virgin Hyperloop One has thought that this Pumumai route would result in about $55 billion in socioeconomic benefit, which is time saving emissions and accident reduction, um, as well as operational cost savings, et cetera. So 
Over 30 years, it would be about $55 billion. You know, it would be all electric and it would ease severe expressway congestion and could reduce greenhouse emissions on the current highway that connects these uh, two cities by up to 150,000 tons annually. So the Pune Mumbai Hyperloop Project will now start a six-month in-depth feasibility study, which will analyze and define the route alignment, including environmental impact and as well as economic and commercial aspects of the route, as well as regulatory framework. The cost and funding model is still being decided. Next, the project will enter a procurement stage upon successful completion of this feasibility study to determine the public-private partnership structure. Construction of the Pune Mumbai Hyperloop route would commence after procurement and would be completed in two phases. The first being with an operational demonstration track between two points on the route, and the second would be a demonstration track constructed in two to three years from the signing of the agreement and serve as a platform for testing, certifying, um, and regulating the system for commercial operations. The second phase will target to complete construction of the Pune Mumbai route in five to seven years. Also uh, extend the route to link uh, central Pune with the new Pune International Airport and the uh, Jawala Nehru Port in Mumbai with Pune's industrial economic zones. It's a public-private partnership um, that the Indian government is saying that will uh, save taxpayer money while delivering a transport option that will help support economic growth. So India would be a tremendous market for the Hyperloop. The Pune Mumbai route is one of the strongest economic cases that Virgin Hyperloop One has seen uh, yet to date. And the state of Maharashtra has made a strong commitment to build and develop the first Hyperloop route in India. We look forward to seeing and monitoring this and it'll be a really exciting route if they can build it along this route they can pretty much build the hyperloop anywhere on earth so this is really exciting stay tuned within the hyperloop to learn more about it ladies and gentlemen we have amongst us a personality that has revolutionized the very meaning of business and investment the world over Sir Richard Branson, founder Virgin Group and chairman Virgin Hyperloop One. Well, it's a great honor to be here today. Uh, the Honorable Prime Minister Modi, the Honorable Chief Minister Devendra, but now this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be here at this wonderful conference with our Virgin Hyperloop team to share some very exciting news for the future of transportation in India and for the wider world. The Indian state of Maharashtra has signed a framework agreement with the intent to build a Virgin Hyperloop between Pune and Mumbai, beginning with an operational <laughs> demonstration track in the region. Now just to let you know what this means, this first Hyperloop route will link central Pune with Mumbai and Nabi Mumbai International Airport in around 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> How long does it take on the road? <laughs> and it will connect 26 million people. Individual pods will go straight to individual gates at the airport, saving a further hour or so going through the airport. It will carry 150 million passengers per year, and it will help create a thriving, competitive mega region. As Virgin Hyperloop Chairman, I'm incredibly excited about the, tra the, the potential to truly transform not just transportation, but the wider society. Virgin Hyperloop One can help India become a global transportation pioneer, and it can forge a new world-changing industry. It can leapfrog existing transport systems, and it create the backbone of an infrastructure system fit for the 21st century. As our team studies have found, the Pune-Mumbai route will result in 55 billion US in socio-economic benefits. It will reduce journey times massively. 
it will reduce accidents and it will cut operational costs. We expect the high capacity passenger and cargo Virgin Hyperloop system to create tens of thousands of jobs here, helping to attract new business and investment to the region. It will be 100% electric. It will be an efficient system which will also ease severe expressway congestion and will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by around 86,000 tonnes. Virgin Hyperloop is the only company in the world that has built a fully operational Hyperloop test system, soon capable of speeds up to 1,000 kilometers per hour. I became its chairman having visited in Nevada desert outside Las Vegas. I was impressed by the wonderful team working hard to make Hyperloop a reality and excited by the amazing potential of a system to change the world. I believe Virgin Hyperloop could have the same impact upon India in the 21st century as trains did in the 20th century. The Pune-Mumbai route is an ideal first corridor as part of a national Hyperloop network that could dramatically reduce travel times between most of India's major cities to under two hours. It will also help alleviate the misery of people sitting in traffic hour after hour after hour. At Virgin, we're always focused upon innovating in the present while pioneering into the future. As the brilliant teams at Virgin Trains, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Australia and other companies around the Virgin Group continue to push their industries forward, we're equally excited by businesses such as Virgin Galactic, Virgin Orbit and Virgin Hyperloop, breaking through further barriers in the coming years. Thank you for hosting us here. We look forward to working together to help transform India and Indian transport for good. It's an, it's an exciting day and a virgin birth today here in India. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.